hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I got a bit confused there for some reason. So today's a video is uh, basically just a little chat about Song of Silver, Flame Like Night and Dark Star Burning, Ash Falls White by Emily Wen Chow? 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 Don't judge me, okay? So, basically, my cat is destroying a plant. But you know, why not? <laughs> Destruction! So, basically, this video came about because, uh, well, I read these two books, but I read these two books because I watched a video by Gavin um, where he just casually mentioned that this was a duology and here was me just thinking there was going to be a third book so I was holding off reading it <laughs> well there we go so um, shout out to Gavin for unintentionally you know getting me to read these books that I just had lying around waiting for a book three that's not coming <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so I picked up this one first because, you know, book one, and you should probably start with book one. Had I picked up this one before, I would be so confused. Anyway, so these books, um, Chinese mythology based, now don't quote me on that because I literally know nothing about Chinese mythology, but I think from having read previous Chinese mythology based book books uh, rather that I could kind of safely say that it's kind of based on that yeah listen I need to read more mythology from around the world not just Greek Egyptian Nordic Roman okay Greek and Roman is basically the same but there's so many different kinds of mythology around the world there's so many I google it and there were loads that I'd never even heard of <laughs> so many so many I can't even pronounce but you know that's not strange seeing as I can barely pronounce my own name sometimes I can not pronounce my name most times like 98% of the time Anyway, so let's start this off. So let me just, because I kept getting them confused. We have Lan, the girl, and we have Sen, the boy. So we start off basically, <laughs> we start off with Lan. So um, the first impression I got of her was basically like she's this street urchin collecting stuff for trade because <laughs> because the first thing we see is her in this like mysterious shop trying to well not trying to she is in a trade of sorts because she has this um she has this mark on her wrist that basically just she can see and she's trying to figure out what this mark means because she cannot read it so she's basically going to this i want to say pawn shop uh, these words are not used but basically a pawn shop where this old man owns and works <laughs> I guess um, and he has this scroll which she trades for but you know as as would happen the police they're not really called the police but you know there's they basically are part of the grand army but um, these are the doing the patrols around town dudes um but they're not great people no um basically the trade is interrupted by them and she scurries off to her tea house because apparently you know she's not a street urchin she's a singer and a slash waitress i guess at a tea house but this tea house also kind of gives me the this is a whorehouse vibe <laughs> yeah because, you know, people, men, um, can buy time with the tea girls. I'm going to call them tea girls. 
the, 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 the girl is around town and you know they can buy the time for them the, the girl is to become their wives or you know just for the night and if it's just for the night basically they are shunned away from the tea house because now they are sullied ew who wants a used up girly it's this world okay it's not me <laughs> It's just as well. Uh, but on to the next POV, because we, we switch point of views between Sen and Lan. I keep confusing their names for some reason. I, yeah. Anyway, so over to Sen. And he is now entering this same pawn shop we were in earlier. Only it's been destroyed and the old man is dead. Mystery. So basically, he's been following this trail, um, this lead, um, which has led him to this shop and this dead man, um, and now eventually, <laughs> um, and then that trail from the shop, um, leads him to the tea house where Lan is, and she and he sees her singing and he's like ooh la la bebe kinda <laughs> but the the uh the old not the old the the baddie policeman he uh, has also followed the, the trail of Lan to a different kind of trail but he's followed the trail and uh has now spotted Lan and is buying her time the nighty time uh, so many things happen just in this little tea house basically bloody murder and now Lan and Sen are on the run from the big bad army because the big bad army dude who's basically been looking for Lan for the last like 12 years or so because spoiler he killed her mum. You find out this pretty early on, so it's not a big spoiler, but yeah. So many things, so many things. So, <laughs> what we get in this book. So we get, um, so Lan and Sen. I really have to think about these damn names, okay? I kind of want to call them Len and Sen. So bad, okay? Len and San. Lan and Sen, fuck's sake, <laughs> the boy and the girl, they come from different clans but the people um, the, are the original owners of the whole land and basically the bad army dude is um, the invader people uh, that's now taken over for the last 12 years or so. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we have different two different types of people, uh, the boy and the girl, they they basically come from people that have a certain type of magic. Um, it's all of, it, it's all very yin and yang kind of magic. It's it's that kind of energy magic. So it's all about the balance of things. Uh, but yeah, so there's that kind of magic. But the the bad the bad army dude, um, him and his people. I, I mean, I'm saying people, but I don't think all of the people of the different types of dudes um, have magic. It's just that uh, a lot of people do. So, just a generalization, okay? So, big bad army dude, um, he has, um, well, metal magic. And it's the kind of metal magic that made me think of Brandon Sanderson and Mistborn. So now I'm thinking, it's just a side note here, but I'm thinking, um, is this metal magic in these, this duology, like, sneakily inspired by Brandon Sanderson's magic? Or is Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn magic sneakily inspired by Chinese mythology? I don't know. This is a question I'm posing. So if you know the answer, please tell me because I have not done that thorough research. <laughs> I've just read the books, okay? I just read the books. Anyway, we have a whole you know, we we have them <laughs> we have them running away from the bad dudes 
um, as well as trying to find these. So in their, let's say, religion, um, they have these four demon gods um, and they've kind of gone missing. Um, but you can you, you can make like a bargain with these demon gods um, or other demons for that matter but specifically we're looking for these demon gods so we're using them as an example but you can make a bargain with them where basically they will inhabit you and you can use their magic for however long or whatever your bargain is say um, as soon as you've killed a hundred people, a hundred souls, the demon, um, will scurry away and you won't have that magic anymore. That extra magic, I suppose, because you already have your own magic, <laughs> your own power. But it's, um, with the demon inside you, um, <laughs> as it were, you kind of get, uh, more powerful as it were. So these people that practice um, that, that the yin and yang kind of magic, they're called practitioners, they are practicing, uh, but it is, it's not against the law per se, but it's very frowned upon to practice the dark demon god thing kind of magic. Basically, don't make a, don't, don't make a bargain with the demon, um, because it's taboo. The other people don't like it. Because usually what happens is you're destroying yourself as it were, because some of them want your soul as well. So basically, once the bargain is done, whatever you bargain made the deal with, whatever the deal was you made, basically you will probably die afterwards as well. Fun times, fun times. So we have a lot of, you know, learning about that magic system and magic and um, the past of these characters and um, the whole, all the clans and all, you know, the whole backstory of everything, basically. We have that as well as the big bad army dude um, looking for them and basically also wanting these demon gods because he thinks these people have done badly and not used these demon gods power in you know conquering kind of way because that's what the badass army because that is what the big bad army dude thinks is the correct way of living there is one thing in this book which, and it, I, I guess it's kind of spoilery, but it's also, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> it happens so fast, and basically in like two seconds, these two characters, they're just, oh, I love you, I've always loved you, and it's not like we just met two seconds ago, but we love each other now, so yes. I was so confused. I was like, where was this coming from? <laughs> where was the build-up? <laughs> you just, you just put the information there, but didn't tell me why. <laughs> yeah, there was no build-up. It was just like, now we're married. Not exactly, but you get me, you get me. So, the second book. Let's put it on this side because, fun time. So, the second book, the conclusion of it all. So, <laughs> this one basically... We don't know who the bad guys are anymore because there's so many of them. Who do we trust? <laughs> who is going to win this whole madness uh, conquering war thing? Will it be the good guys, the bad guys? Who even are the good guys anymore? Because everybody seems to be a bad guy in this one. I will say though, because I can't say much about this book without spoiling it, it does end on a very good note, um, but but also, when did this happen? <laughs> I know when it happened, but also, wow, wow, yes, <laughs> that's basically how I'm gonna sum <laughs> summarize this series. Um, no. So basically, there was a lot to get into because I know very, very little about Chinese mythology. Now, I will say, having said that, I will say that what is 
taking place in these books are very manageable to get through. You understand everything. It's not like, I don't know who this character is because I don't have the full backstory, the whole mythology, the story based. So definitely very interesting. And it does make me want to read more of these kinds of books. I have read some. Um, I'm... I'm, I feel like I'm just getting into it, and and, and yes, I am in a way, uh, but I need more. <laughs> it feels like it's a whole new world just opening up, and now I want more. I always want more, don't I? Yes, I am greedy that way, and I'm okay with it. I'm simply very okay with it. Um, <laughs> it's so weird. Anyway, so basically, Chinese mythology, dragons, Dragons? Yeah, they kind of are dragons in a way. Anyway, um, so basically, Chinese mythology, war, magic, that kind of jam. Very easy read, by the way. Very easy read. I do, on a side note, I do want to check out her, um, what's it called? The Blood Air series. So Blood Air, Red Tigers and Crimson Rain. I don't think I've heard of these books before, picking these up. and. You know, I, I did kind of just pick this one up because um, Spade Edges, signed by the author, and also bloody gorgeous cover, um, which is why I picked up this one. This one, um, it, it's not as special as, as, as this one, but, you know, they go together, don't they? Um, honestly, yes, give me more, give me more. Uh, yeah, so... We'll be looking into that series and, you know, keeping my eye out for anything new she writes in the future. Um, yeah, so this, that's this video. So if you made it this far, comment a dragon, because that means you're real. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you're probably real. I don't know. What, what, what does that even mean? Anyway, comment a dragon in the comments down below and, you know, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you all next time. Until then, take care. Ah, bye -bye.